We're living in an era of distrust, and I'll talk about that more in this show. Also, Lieutenant Governor of Minnesota Peggy Flanagan gives some pretty terrible parenting advice. We'll see how that looks when we apply it to certain principles and different scenarios. And we're going to take a look at the Peter Pan and Wendy trailer and uh, see what's going on there. All that and more on Jake's Takeaway. Welcome back. I told you I'd be back. I had to uh, sit here for like 20 minutes and really get into the mode again. It felt like it had been so long. But uh, once I warmed up and got back into it, did my throat spray, warmed up my voice, I'm back. So how's your two weeks been? It's been a good while. We're going to talk about the uh, era of distrust that we're living in now and how we can't trust pretty much any politician as far as we can throw them. And uh, that's that's really why you should think for yourselves and not idolize the politicians too much. They just say too many crazy things, folks. You may agree with them one day, and then the next day they're saying something nutso, like Kanye West randomly coming out against Jewish people when he shortly before said that he was coming out as a Christian and was a full devout Christian. Great. Makes people like me look great. We're going to kick it off. Lieutenant Governor of Minnesota, Peggy Flanagan, gives some of the worst parenting advice you could possibly receive, and um, I'm willing to bet she hasn't really put this into practice. Otherwise, her household must be a mess. But let's take a look at that. Because let's be clear. This is life-affirming and life-saving health care. When our children tell us who they are, it is our job as grown-ups to listen and to okay. believe them. I love how all these people in the back are just here to be affirmed. That's what it means to be a good parent. Yeah, everyone in the background is just there to be seen on camera as, hey, I'm trans. You can tell by their glasses <laughs> that they are um, not your average human being. But they are there to represent and be represented by someone who's not trans interesting i don't think i need to tell you that this is some of the worst parenting advice you could possibly receive no it is not a parent's responsibility to listen and believe their children sure listen absolutely when they're not in trouble <laughs> listen to them to in the sense that they should feel like you are listening to them and that you hear what they're saying but then you set them straight in the end right it's, this isn't crazy. This is how parenting has gone for generations, for centuries. Parents aren't there to just affirm their children like these people in the background of this video with their goofy glasses from the 80s. But let's apply this principle to real life. Just believe them when they say things. Okay. All right. Dad, I don't want to go upstairs. There's a monster under my bed. God help us all. Run, son, run! Or perhaps, uh, Dad, look, I'm a T-Rex. I'm sorry, son. You have to go. Now, this gets crazy very quickly, very, very quickly, because kids say all kinds of things, and you can't believe every stinking thing they say. If a little boy says he's a dinosaur, you can't just immediately start laser treating his skin until it turns into scales and, uh adding a tail and forking his tongue or I mean this is stuff that is absolutely insane I mean there was that person growing up that I learned about that actually got his tongue forked but he was not looked at as a normal person he was tattooed face tattooed head shaved head he put spikes on his head I mean the dude looked like insane and he probably is a little bit but that's the point these aren't these are outlier people these aren't supposed to be accepted as as normal members of society. And the guy did that to be put, set aside from the majority of society. He was counterculture. He was not part of the culture. What they're trying to do now is make it part of the main culture. And we cannot let this happen because it's absolute just madness. Do you remember what happened to the regular gay people? <laughs> I have to think they're annoyed with being lumped in with these people at this point because at least they're clear and concise at, on what they like. 
it's still not as insane as just believing you're something you are not. The reason this is a big deal is because people like Dylan Mulvaney, if you don't know who Dylan Mulvaney is, uh, he was, I guess, a Broadway star. Um, I don't know, minor or major. I honestly have not paid attention to the Broadway culture all that much, um, though I do like theater. My wife is very much into it, and she got me into it when we got together. But um, regardless, this guy was a pretty big star on stage, I guess, and um, was always a pretty eccentric um, gay man. Um, but he recently, I guess, few days more than a year ago, he had like an anniversary. Uh, he came out as a trans, not woman, girl. I want to be very clear about that because he has always said that from the beginning and I always found it very disturbing. He didn't say woman. And uh, you can see him on his TikTok. I won't um, burn your eyeballs out with the clip of that. However, you can find him on TikTok. I've seen clips circulating on the internet where he cosplays as Eloise, cosplays as a six-year-old girl from a movie. I honestly can't remember which one, but the character's name is Eloise. And he lip syncs to the recording from this movie while dressed as a little girl in a pink hotel room. It's disturbing. and But this is where it leads. And he always said from the beginning, this is day one of girlhood, not womanhood. And then the month anniversary, and then two months, and then, you know, and he did a whole, whole historic, not historic, but a whole self-biography, autobiography of his whole girlhood thing. This is what it came to, folks. And now he's cosplaying as a late 20s grown man pretending to be cosplaying as a little girl. It's a little telling, too, because the fact that he's cosplaying as a little girl kind of shows you that he doesn't really believe that he's a girl himself. It's just a game. He's just acting. He is a Broadway actor. He's good at this. This is his, his shtick. So this is just a fantasy for him to play out, and we're all prisoners to his insanity. And while the media pats him on the back and praises him and lifts his voice up and invites him to the White House, yes, that happened. He went to the White House and talked about how we should trans the kids with President Biden. He was invited by President Biden, if that tells you anything. Perhaps your head is in the in the dirt, but um, this has been going on for a while. You'll notice a lot of his administration is trans and or women not identifying as women. I don't really know what the terms are anymore is that trans still or are you just who knows the lines are getting blurred the more we go on but dylan mulvaney is the perfect picture of what happens when you believe your children when you just let them do whatever they want and think whatever they want to think and you don't reprimand them and you don't challenge them you don't show them how reality works and what they are and to accept what they are it's sad it really is. These people are victims of their own delusions. And no one's telling them, one way or the other, what's right and what's wrong. They like to tell us very quickly what's right and what's wrong. But when we try to challenge them, they say, oh, there is no right and wrong. Oh, evil doesn't exist. You know, all that. Interesting. Very convenient for you. So rather than being a good parent in Peggy Flanagan's eyes... Perhaps we should be real good parents and actually allow for some nuance within the genders, but not any sort of delusion that you can just be the other gender or a non-gender or some other made-up gender. And people always say that the gender is a social construct. That may be true, but it's a so social construct based on the reality that there are two sexes. <laughs> These genders were made and assigned to these two sexes. You can call it a social construct all, all you want, but that is the truth. It was constructed with that in mind. Gender roles were constructed with a man and woman in mind. Not, not the 70 plus other genders that you may think of. I, for one, am glad that when I walk out of the house and think to myself, I want to be a unicorn today, that a freaking horn doesn't sprout out of my cranium. That would be horrifying. 
unfortunately, along some of these same lines, Disney has been putting out um, subtle hints for a couple decades now as far as um, woke ideology, pushing trans stuff, pushing, um, I mean, before it used to just be pushing gay stuff. Now it's straight up transsexual stuff. Maybe YouTube will take me down for saying it that way. I'm pretty sure it's a frowned upon word now, but that is what they are. That's what trans is short for. So I'm using it. Get over it. Um, also, that reminds me, YouTube apparently has a way to bleep out words. So if, if I ever get bleeped out, just know that you don't have to watch me on YouTube. I'm also on Rumble and you can get all of the content. No censorship, no bleeping. It'll all be there. And I will never be taken down because they are very pro-free speech. To my knowledge, they're not necessarily conservative or anything. They just care not to censor people. Isn't that great? So if you ever get bleeped or taken down, or you're missing a video from a week and I didn't tell you that there wouldn't be one, know that it will probably still be on Rumble and that YouTube may have taken my video down. However, I'll try to keep you updated on such things. So back to Disney. They have been pushing stuff and gender swapping characters and race swapping characters up the wazoo for no reason. I have no problem with the, with the race uh, swapping. It, I mean, it's annoying when you have this picture, especially when it's based on old books where the character is clearly written white. Then it's like, why wouldn't you just make them white? That's how everyone remembers them. They have a connection that way or over the other way around for that matter. Uh, but it's just so honestly deliberate. If you keep looking at the new movies they keep making, they just, especially the remakes, it's like very deliberately trying to basically change your childhood. They're trying to rewrite your childhood, rewrite your history, rewrite our memories or, or replace them. And it's just getting old, you know? But again, it's, you know, it's not the worst thing just to change the race, but you can tell that they're just doing it for the sake of it. And it makes no impact on the actual movies they create. Um, on top of that, they're remaking movies, not just stories that we've seen before, but remaking their own takes on these stories. So it's like Inception of Disney movies. So they've been going through their old movies and remaking them. And don't you think that's not on purpose? Not just because they want to rehash the same audience and get tickets, ticket sales from them, which they are definitely doing, but it's to rewrite and replace everything you know with things that they want you to know. I mean, just look at uh, Roald Dahl, the, uh, the author of... Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, they're going back, the company that owns his licensing and his rights now, um, I believe he's passed. Might want to check me on that. I believe he's passed away, so this company is just kind of doing what they want with his books. They're literally going back and rewriting his books and replacing certain terms with other terms. I'm not making this up. You can look it up. It's crazy. Um, I've also heard the argument that maybe we should stop buying digital books because... They can just go in the file and change it. And as soon as, say, you have a Kindle like I do, it'll just connect to the internet and update your book and you have a whole new book and you'll never know. Scary, scary thought, scary thought. So if that if that scares you, buy physical books. Anyways, that is what's going on here. They're replacing these movies. They're rewriting these movies. They're going to put subtle things in there. And lately they have not been subtle at all. But we're going to look at Peter Pan and Wendy the latest remake of an old classic that we all know and love, but a version that we're not going to remember and won't love nearly as much. So let's take a look at that trailer. Tell me. So serious. How did you come to Neverland? They also have to make all of them serious. They can't make them happy-go-lucky anymore. Are you... Lost boys. Every last one of us. But you're not all boys, so... Saw that coming, didn't you? About it's half of them place. are girls. It's home. Peter found it. Just like he found all of us. It's like he found me. Peter Pan? Were you expecting someone else? There's the race swap. What do you say, boys? You ready for an adventure? He looks very far away. He's so tiny, he looks ridiculously young. I get that's his thing, but wow. This year.
about the past in your heart, but where you go from here, it's up to you. Wendy, Moira, Angela, darling. Where is Peter Pan? <laughs> So there you have it. Right off the bat, they hit you up with the Lost Boys, and <laughs> perhaps predictably, they are not all boys. I I have a lot of predictions for this, so we're going to do a little segment. We're going to call it Jake's Predictions for Peter Pan and Wendy. You ready for this? I've got a list. So I was thinking through the classic movie and remembering all the parts, and just thinking what they might replace, what they might change, what uh, what ideology are they going to push on me or even just subtle annoying preachy hints like they usually do so i'm going through the movie and i'm thinking about all these scenes memorable scenes mind you and thinking how they're going to going to be less memorable because of modern modernization so let's look at number one concerning the lost boys i have a prediction that at least one of the lost boys or rather lost boy girls will say she's a boy. Not just a lost boy, she will say she is a boy. That is my prediction. Number one for the lost boys. Lost boy girls. <laughs> the Native American tribe scenes will be uninteresting. This is number two, by the way. Native American tribe scenes will be uninteresting. Colonialism will be mentioned negatively. And they'll try to normalize weed. I guarantee it. <laughs> Don't quote me on this, but uh, you can check me later. Or perhaps you have no interest in this movie. I don't blame you. But I will watch it for you. I will suffer. And we'll come back to this list. And I will see how, how on point I was. Perhaps I won't be at all. But again, we'll see. But I do think the, the Native American characters are going to be probably more prominent than they ever were in the other movie. They will talk down on white people, probably, and they'll mention colonialism in a negative way. But you'll remember in the old cartoon, perhaps controversially at this point, where the kids would like take turns with the smoking pipe, with the, the happy stuff. <laughs> uh, but I do think they're going to try to paint that in a, neg in a positive light, rather, and try to normalize that, um, even for young children, I would imagine. Oh, this is good. This will clear your mind. Just try this. It'll make you feel happy. Mark my words. Or they'll just get rid of it entirely so they don't have to deal with that. Perhaps there's a limit on how many like woke things you can stick in there before people like that even like woke stuff just get bored with it. I don't know. We'll see. There will probably be a new song that looks and sounds out of place, much like in the movie remake Aladdin, where they added a song for Jasmine where she went on this... the whole song that was very modern compared to the other songs didn't fit at all and they had to literally pause her surroundings to squeeze the song in because there's they had no way of implementing it into the the actual story of the movie so they literally paused it visually while she's going around an empty fro or rather a frozen paused palace singing this song about women empowerment i'm going to be my own thing but there will probably be a new song that will be terrible, unmemorable, and v vaguely generic. Again, much like Jasmine's added song in Aladdin. This is a fun one. At least one of the mermaids will be replaced with either a merman or a drag queen. I'm putting my money on this one. <laughs> it's just the perfect drag queen scene i just i can see it now the glitter the scales there's going to be colored hair there's going to be men there's going to be at least one man and they might not even say it's a merman he'll just yeah i'm i'm totally one of the mermaids and he's got seashells on his chest yeah i fit right in and his hair will totally not look like a wig probably the parents will be laughably bad at parenting 
Now, the, the parents weren't all that bad in, in the cartoon, if I remember correctly. They were, you know, a little passive, a little neglectful, maybe. And, you know, as rich folks are, they're like, oh, we'll be back in a few hours while we do rich people things. Don't destroy the house or run away into a magical Neverland place. And what do they do? Exactly that. Maybe not destroy the house, but... But I, I'm predicting the parents will be much more exaggeratingly, laughingly bad at being parents. And it'll justify their running away. Because we can't have happy families in movies, God forbid. Especially in a family movie that's supposed to be lighthearted and happy-go-lucky. I think that's why Disney's mostly failing these days, is because they, they just refuse to have a just a good, happy movie. And honestly, leading into that, my <laughs> the next prediction is that all viewers will wonder if they'll ever see sunlight again. All these remakes are so dark. Why are they so dark? That's been like the main point online, is that they're just dark. There's no color. There's no life. They just look sad. And then on top of that, the trailer makes it look ridiculously serious, even though <laughs> you look at everything that's happening and you, you can't take it seriously. It's like, boom. Wendy. And then this epic voice comes on. And, but there's no color. And then the concept is about children who never grow up. Uh, what is, what's the world coming to? What's cinema coming to? We're so parched of actual entertainment. We're so we're exhausting our ideas. We're rehashing other ideas and rewriting them. And we're not even doing it well. We're not even doing it well. They should have wrote like I don't know, some crazy adult sequel to it or something, not like adult, but you know, for adults. Maybe that'd be more interesting. I mean, there's plenty of like fairy tale things that written for adults that are interesting. You could use the same characters even. And it wouldn't have to necessarily be a sequel to the the old cartoon, but it would be more interesting at least. I think you'd get more viewers. But um, I guess the this trailer has been bombed on YouTube, and people are just not looking forward to this. Not looking forward to this at all. Uh, moving on to the next prediction: Captain Hook will not die. Not that he died in the original cartoon, but I I'm predicting he won't even be alluded to dying. And they will completely remove the crocodile from the cartoon to avoid the illusion that he will die. They're, they may even throw in some reason to spare his life. Oh, I'm the better person. I don't kill people. We won't put into account that you've killed dozens of people. Never. That's, that's one thing that drives me nuts with movies is when they like, No, if I kill him, I'll be just like him. But it's like, he killed thousands of people are you serious you just and then what happens they they let him go or they put him in a cage and he gets out later and then he kills thousands more people and then it happens all over again no we must spare him or he'll die by some indirect means and it's like it's good that he stopped but i wouldn't have killed him still it's like bro just just do it man last but not least no one will rewatch it but the original will spike in popularity. I'm sure this will cause people to crave the old classics and the color of the old classics and to just go back and watch it. So I have no doubts in my mind. This movie will bomb. There's a reason it's going straight to Disney+. Plus. I don't think people are going to pay the ticket prices for this. Their remakes have not historically been all that great. Um... I don't know if you've kept up with them. However, I was impressed with the Jungle Book remake is legitimately good, even though it's a serious bummer. There's no music and stuff. But honestly, singing CG animals is just kind of weird, and I don't really want to watch that. There's also so much less you can do with like the dance numbers when it's live action. I, I put that in quotes because they made a Lion King live action, but it was like 100% CG. Um. It's just less interesting to watch dance numbers when they're like CG animated. I don't know. There's way less because they're trying to make them realistic. And if you like animate them in a way that they're like stretching around for added effect and emphasis and humor, they look creepy as CG. So it's like, yeah, it's a little weird. But that's why these were cartoons. And if you remake these as live action, they just don't they just don't translate. They don't work. And then add on to that, that you're changing everything and 
taking the color out and all the fun in general and then preaching at us at the same time. This is why no one wants to see them. And, and unless they're like me in the beginning when I was watching some of these remakes, I kind of stopped with Beauty and the Beast because that was not good. Um, anyways, you watch these and they just there's no fun in it. There's no life in it. And it just makes you want to watch the originals. Which maybe that's part of their marketing because if you have Disney Plus and you're watching this, you might just go right back to their platform that has the same stuff and watch the originals right after you watch the new ones. Is that genius or stupid? I can't decide. I'm going to leave it there today, folks. Thanks for watching on Rumble YouTube. Please like and subscribe. If you're on Rumble, hit that smack that Rumble button. Get me some some numbers. Work me into the algorithm here. Um, if you like what you're watching or listening to, if you're listening on your favorite podcast app, um, please tell me, tell your friends about me, share me with your friends. Um, YouTube has a clip feature. If there's something you liked, um, let me know about it, share it with your friends. Helps a lot. Also, if you're listening on Apple podcasts or other, um, podcast apps that have reviews, please leave a review, a five-star review that helps me a ton to get noticed. And if I get noticed enough, I can get put on the front page of some of these websites and, get more viewers. So that's fantastic. And then I can make more of this content for you. And uh, maybe if I get big enough, I can give you more content, extra content, mayhaps. We shall see. Big dreams, big dreams. Only you can make it happen. Thanks for listening. I'm your host, Jake Critcher. This has been Jake's Takeaway. I'll see you next week.